One of the things you might notice is that there are a lot of different options for how you can view web pages. And these different options are called your different browsers. So different browsers have their pros and cons. I am not one of those people who gets really passionate about having using one over the other. But I will tell you, as you become a web developer, if you decide to, you're going to want to know some of these differences. It's perfectly natural to have a preferred browser. For most people, it's whichever one was installed on their computer. But when you want to create websites, you might have one browser you use to look at things, but you really want to test your site on multiple browsers. So let's talk about some of the differences. First, we have Internet Explorer. And for a long time, it was the most popular browser, and that was just because it was the one that came with Microsoft Windows. It was platform dependent, and what that means is that it doesn't automatically work if you have a Mac. In 2015, Windows 10 came out, and instead of including Internet Explorer as the default, it's using something called Microsoft Edge. Edge is meant to replace Internet Explorer, so people who buy new computers are going to be using Edge. But don't forget, people don't buy new computers all the time, or even if they do buy a new computer, they might decide they still like Internet Explorer better. So you basically want to make sure that you're considering both browsers. Another option is Google Chrome. Google Chrome was developed by, surprise, Google, and it was a freeware that they created to be used on Microsoft Windows. However, it's later been ported, or you can consider it changed, so that it works on Linux, your Apple machines, your Android, basically most machines that you're going to come across. The nice thing about Google Chrome is that they really focused on security. So if that's something that you're kind of concerned about, Chrome is a good way to go. The next option is Firefox. Once again, the theme seems to be I'm always recommending free and open source browsers. What open source means is that they've actually shared their code with everyone for how they created Firefox. And this is a really great way to let people make suggestions and improvements to it. It's also available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and different BSD operating systems. So who's using the different browsers? Back in 2014, I can show you that Internet Explorer had a really big chunk of the market, right around there. You had Internet Explorer 11, Internet Explorer 10, Internet Explorer 9, etc. So they had the biggest chunk, and then Chrome was getting a lot bigger, as well as Firefox. Well, when we look over here at 2017, though, we can see that Chrome really made a big surge, and up to 64% of desktops and laptops were using Google Chrome, followed by Firefox, Internet Explorer, et cetera. Um, this is always going to change. It's going to flux. You can't pick one browser and say, hey, this is the new one that everyone's going to be using. And the other interesting thing to kind of think about is, especially in this old map over here, people use really old browsers because people like to use what they're used to. One thing that I'm hoping all the students in my class take into consideration, though, is accessibility. Accessibility is basically the ability of a browser to support all these special functionalities um, and all these new HTML5 tags and all types of assistive technology. So one place you can go is this site, www.html5accessibility.com. And what you'll find at this site is how well the different browsers are supporting the tags. So you can see right now, Edge actually has 100% compliance, which isn't surprising because it's one of the newest browsers, so they had accessibility in mind right from the beginning. The other browsers were created before people were paying quite as much attention, so they're definitely making strides to get better and better. However, it is important to notice that Internet Explorer is at 56% and since it's been basically relegated into the background, it's unlikely that it's going to get much better. So what I want you to take away from this is that browsers can really vary in how well they adhere to different standards. And different versions of browsers also need to be considered as well. Just because something didn't work in 2018 doesn't mean it won't work in 2019. 
So the best thing that you can do is write your code and then open it up in Safari and Firefox and Chrome, as many different browsers as you can. Not only will it make your site better, but it'll be a little bit interesting for you as you can look at the different ways that HTML5 is supported.